Travel is not the right of the elite, the rich and famous. Everyone loves to travel and travel is for everyone. <laughs> Hi friends, 45 seconds. I'm up to 45 seconds of holding my breath. Okay, but back to the subject at hand. I wanted to chat with you about something today. And one thing that I know is that most Americans don't understand the value of this navy blue passport. And it's crazy because according to Forbes, about 200 million Americans, that's 60% of the population, do not own passports. And the reasons are pretty trivial or complex. You let me know in the comments why you think Americans don't own passports. American passports aren't too expensive, just $110 for 10 years over the age of 16. And it's true, most professions offer very low vacation time, about two weeks minimum is the average. I know my European friends scoff at us over here. So perhaps the reasons are there just isn't enough time to go all the way abroad, especially our country is pretty big itself and there's lots to explore here. I don't think you realize how big the US is. But whatever the case is, it's truly a shame because despite the COVID-19 pandemic causing foreign countries to close their borders to American tourism, and I'll explain a little bit later why that was really critical. Despite everything we've been through in 2020 and beyond, the United States passport is still one of the most powerful passports in the world. Social media is flooded with images of people living their best lives in some of the most luxurious places on earth, places that previous generations had to save for years to afford. It's almost like a currency of sort, or a measure of how good of a traveler you are. If you follow social media, you're probably left with envy or confusion, jealousy. <laughs> like, how in the world do these people do this? What are their jobs and is it real? <laughs> I mean, these people look fabulous. The craziest part is when you hear their stories of, I quit my job to travel the world. <laughs> and all the rest of us are like checking our bank accounts and our pocketbooks, like what, how? Is that real? So wait, this isn't a video to drag influencers and social media stars, big ups to what they do. And this is not a video to unpack how they do it. So we'll just leave that there. I'm very proud of my passport. <laughs> There's just a few pages left. I gotta get that updated <laughs> stat. <laughs> now, I do personally track how many countries I've been to, but I never felt compelled to publicly talk about that or post it on my Instagram or anything like that. When I started traveling professionally, it was never a goal to dash through as many countries as I can. I do want to go to every place on this planet, but that was never really a goal to do it in a rush. I'm not in a rush. So this is the Henley Passport Index. It measures the access that each country's travel documents affords. And 2014 was the last time the US and the UK topped the ranking. In 2019, pre-pandemic, the US, along with some other countries, tied at number six. Can you guess which country was number one? Trick question, two countries, Japan and Singapore, had the most powerful passports in the world each having access to 190 countries. But being number six isn't all that bad. In 2019, pre-pandemic, the United States had access to 184 countries without the need of a visa. So what does that even mean? Well, it meant that we can basically go to any country in the world. We could, if we could figure out how to finance it, 
hop on and off an airplane and be let into that country just because we had this passport, just because we're American, just like that. We didn't earn it, we were born into it. And that privilege, my friends, is something that many people around the world simply do not have. And it's to no fault of their own. Hi, I'm back at the pool. <laughs> and I know it's not lost on me that I'm doing this story at this place. Maybe I did it on purpose. So most people around the world have to ask in very complicated and expensive ways to be let into a country. And the approval process can be very complicated. It could take more than just weeks. It could take months, sometimes even years to get that approval if they even get that approval. Unfortunately, the visa was denied. My dad was so furious, he was angry. He paid a lot of money because we were five people applying for the US visa. In some cases, you even have to book your flight, then pay all the fees to apply, and you still might get denied. You have to do all that, and there's still no guarantee that your visa will be accepted. Now let's just go back to the computer for a second to do a comparison. In that year, in 2019, and even today, Afghanistan was last. Now sit with that. Imagine not being able to move as freely as we are because of our passport, because of the country we were born in, because of something that we had no control over. Now, I'm fully aware that some people watching this video may not be from the US or one of the privileged passport nations. So I really wanna hear what your experience is like, if you can let me know in the comments, what your experience is like, if you are able to travel, what are some of the hangups and restrictions? Because I think the more people put a face, a real face to somebody who has to experience less of a privileged passport or a so-called weak passport I think we um, will have more understanding to not only embrace our own privilege but also empathy to those who are strong enough to figure out a way to travel despite a weaker passport and if you still have found a way to travel despite it all I salute you okay what you don't walk around your own house in a robe well then you probably should treat yourself better plot twist yeah so when the headline started to populate in 2020 that other countries were closing their borders to American travelers, it was a bigger deal than I think many people knew. And at the time of this taping, some countries are still closed to Americans. Okay, so let's look at the 2021 Henley Passport Index. Oh, okay, so it's not that bad. We dropped from sixth to seventh by the way, the Henley Passport Index is updated in real time. So if you wanna check where your country stands at any given time, I put a link in the description below. Now, before we wrap up, owning a valuable passport or even multiple passports is a wealth flex. What's a wealth flex? Okay, so when we travel, we're used to protecting our passport, mostly because we need it to get where we're going, and if nothing else, to get home. However, it's a move of some savvy investors to own multiple passports for different countries legally. Why? Because being a citizen of more than one nation allows for freedom. Should something happen in the country that you are living, and now I would always like to point out, history tells us that kingdoms rise and fall and i know it's so hard for people to conceptualize the fall of the united states and i'm not saying that we're there yet but history does tell us that kingdoms rise and fall so as a matter of protection it does become more valuable to hold more than one passport legally of course so should something happen to the country you are current resident of you have the right and the freedom via your transportation documents to move to the new nation by which you are a citizen of. So as Americans with passports, we are given so much freedom to move about the world. And I hope that with everything that we've learned of surviving this pandemic, the things we've learned about ourselves our values, what's important to us, tied together with the ongoing fight for equality. I just hope that we don't take the privilege that we have for traveling for granted anymore. Because remember, travel is not the right of the elite, the rich, and the famous. 
everyone loves to travel and travel is for everyone.